Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to another episode of Buyer Fireside Chat. I'm your host, Meghla Bhardwaj, and today's topic is challenges create opportunities. We're going to be talking about how all of the challenges that 2020 has brought to us have, has also, have also created opportunities for buyers, importers, brands all over the world. So to talk about this, I have with me two guests here, Ivan and Mehbooba. Hello, Ivan Mehbooba. How are you doing? Hey, hey, good, good. <laughs> good. Cool. Awesome. So, um, guys, I have some questions for Ivan and Mehbooba, and I'm going to ask them um, how their 2020 was and what sort of opportunities and challenges they had in their businesses and also what they're looking forward to uh, for 2021. But if you guys have any questions for Ivan and Mehbooba, please type them in the comments, wherever you're watching from, whether Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, type your questions and comments in the comment section and we'll be able to address all of your questions. Okay, so um, before we get started, let's do some introductions and get to know um, you guys and what your experience is. So Ivan, do you want to start first and just tell us about, you know, what you do, what your experience is, your background and uh, your, your businesses? Yeah, so thank you for having me. I'm pretty excited to be on the show. I, you know, I've been a longtime fan of Global Sources and a little bit of background about who I am. So I'm Ivan. I'm one of the co-founders at Crowdcrate. And about seven years ago, I went to my first Global Sources conference uh, in Hong Kong. And back then, it was when the first AirPods hadn't come out yet. Uh, so brand new to the world was the wireless earbuds concept. So it's funny that I'm speaking about this, but, you know, we found, uh, we actually found a supplier that had probably one of the first ones ever. So we partnered with them. Uh, fast forward six months later, we launched a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter, uh, raised uh, $700,000 in 30 days. So, you know, this is about six, seven years ago. And it's so interesting that, you know, we started kind of tapping into the crowd, getting people excited about a product. And fast forward seven years later, we're kind of doing the same thing for other companies and brands. And there are so many people trying to start brands, even in 2020. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Crowdfunding is one, connecting of influencers. But yeah, that's just a little background about me. It's just we, we like to grow products and companies and help people do it. Fantastic. And of course, influencer marketing is one of your specialties nowadays, right? That's something that you're focusing on. Yes, absolutely. So now 2020, about to hit 2021, the modern day billboard is no longer, you know, on the side of a freeway or inside of a magazine. It's actually in platforms like TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. And that's where people are discovering products more than ever. So influencers are becoming a key component of, you know, strategies when you're entering new markets or growing your company. Yeah, fantastic. And we'll delve a little bit deeper into all of your influencer marketing strategies. I'm, sh I'm sure a lot of <laughs> our, our, <laughs> our viewers will be interested in that. Okay, so Mehbubo, let's talk about you. So can you give us a little bit of background and tell us more about what you do? Um, yeah, so my name is Mehbubo Isan, and um, I'm originally an engineer by profession. But after working for about 10 years, I wanted to... Um, get into entrepreneurship and kind of get off the daily grind. So um, I've, I, I've been um, selling on the Amazon platform for the last three years and I have a leading brand. And, um, you know, um, just hearing from Ivan right now, <laughs> that's one of the things that we would like to do in 2021, you know, influencer marketing. <laughs> so, so I'm really excited about um, sharing my experience about, you know, the challenges we faced in 20, 2020 and how we, uh, the strategies and plans that we took to overcome some of those um, challenges. So uh, thank you, Megla. You're yeah. smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Mabuba, you're of course selling 100% on Amazon, right? That's your focus. Uh, yeah, you could say uh, the majority, the majority okay. of our business. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, just to be clear, uh, we will not be sharing Mebuba's product or her brand. Uh, as you know, some of you will appreciate, we, we do want, uh, she does want to keep the brand private. So, um, okay, so let's get into the topic. And Ivan, I want to talk to you first about the challenges that you and your clients and, you know, everybody, because you have a lot of brands that you deal with. So what sort of challenges did you, uh, did you, did you face in 2020? So some of the big challenges that we saw, and actually kind of speaking from my own personal story, you know, seven years ago, before I went to Hong Kong, I actually was a product design, a product manager for a software company in Japan. And I remember I had to take uh, a holiday to go to Hong Kong. So a lot of people that we talked to, you know, people who are trying to start brands, and sometimes they have a full-time job, and they, they want to they wanna find something that's additional income that can even surpass their business. Uh, their existing, you know, job. So that's one of the challenges does from an entrepreneurial level, uh, specific to 2020. So 2020 is a whirlwind. It's been uh, a lot of a lot of massive gains for some people, but a lot of a lot of trouble for other brands. And uh, with the biggest challenges, I would sum it up with uh, relevancy. So a lot of mm-hmm. brands are struggling to maintain relevancy today. Uh, just to give you an example, a lot of the travel industry. You know, there people are not traveling so much, so a lot of the tertiary brands are struggling in products. But on the flip side, um, some of the other challenges our clients and some of our products are experiencing is they can't hold enough stock because there are industries that are absolutely blowing up um, because of COVID. So, you know, that's why it's so important to just watch the markets. But things like hand sanitizers, uh, home and cookware, fitness. Uh, health and wellness. We own a su- we also run a supplement company uh, in America, and it is probably ten x since COVID. Simply because people are, are staying at home, they're shopping online, and they're trying to stay healthy, right? So, a quick uh, just a, an example that we saw is you know immune support uh, products have probably four x uh, across the board since COVID. Right, that's a happy problem to have, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy problem, but on the flip side, it's like it's also the entrepreneur who must watch the trends and find an mm-hmm. opportunity among the challenges, and that's kind of the the beautiful part about being an entrepreneur, right? Exactly, exactly. So, how did you, you know, overcome these challenges? Like, if you if you didn't have stock and you ran out of stock, what sort of what what sort of strategies did you have to address that? So. In some of, and even for our brands that we run, um, strategies would be to negotiate with your manufacturer, your supplier, different net terms. Um, so right mm-hmm. now, uh, you're kind of at an advantage now, especially when it comes to your buying power, because these manufacturers are also on the flip side, they're struggling to find buyers. So this is a good opportunity where you can renegotiate your terms, uh, you know, manufacturers globally. So this doesn't just apply to overseas manufacturers, but even domestic uh, manufacturers are hitting the same problem. So find the diamond in the rough. Uh, Another way to navigate out of these challenges is uh, kind of make your projections earlier. So if you, for example, something as simple as box boxes or bottles that you need to put your products in, order those out, you know, two to three months in advance, just because you know, the supply chain is being compressed and struggling. So you know, customs and delays, everything that's going to happen will happen. And so you just have to plan well in advance because the last thing you want is just out of stock when you're finding that people want your product. Absolutely. And of course, in 2020, it's been just so difficult to to plan in advance because there's so much uncertainty, right? I mean, uh, first of all, you don't know which product will do well and which won't. I mean, that that was one issue. And um and then secondly, there, there have been so many supply chain issues that no one really, you know, forecasted. Or, for example, right now, there are so many logistics challenges that importers are facing. So are, are, are you uh, running into logistics challenges as well, Ivan, currently with the, you know, the, the ports in the U.S. being congested and the supply chain being really stretched? Everything, everything is just being impacted right now. And uh, I think this is a really good opportunity for brands to leverage, like I was saying, like leverage your buying powers or negotiate those terms, make it more favorable for you. 
you know, mm -hmm. um, I do see that there's a lot of delays on the supply chain side, but yeah, again, I always like looking at opportunities. If you're struggling with these problems, your competitors also. So keep that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so maybe well, let's talk about um, your business specifically. So what sort of challenges did you face in 2020? So um, like Ivan was talking about different brands and different products. So we kind of stuck with our products. We, um, uh, uh, so we were, uh, we were lucky because uh, our product also increased in sales as opposed to some of the uh, categories that Ivan was talking about, which actually reduced in sales. But um, uh, one of the challenges, I, the initial challenge because of COVID was the fact that the factories didn't open on schedule. So um, that actually applied to a lot of the competitors as well. Um, but uh, for us, we had planned well ahead in uh, Q4 of 2019 for uh, you know Chinese New Year, which was going to happen. So um, it got delayed a little bit, but still we were able to have uh, you know a certain amount of inventory uh, before COVID um, to kind of pull through those months. Um, another challenge that we faced was the, the inventory restrictions at Amazon. That was sound. <laughs> yeah, anyway. we're good now. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so um, inventory restrictions in Q, um, Q2 and Q4 right now. So that... Um, uh, has been, you know, a challenge and we just have been planning. Like basically after we faced the inventory restrictions in Q2, we started getting in a lot of inventory as soon as the restrictions were um, stopped. And um, and yeah, so uh, that, that was a challenge. And then the other challenge was the ship logistics, basically shipping costs increased a lot and also they became extremely slow so even though we were trying to do air shipping um, our inventory was stuck at their uh, warehouse for weeks even though we had paid a premium price to have them airship so um so yeah we dealt with all of that but uh, no complaints i mean uh, overall it's been a good a great year for us we 3 x so um yeah yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. So how did you deal with some of these challenges, you know, like uh, the inventory restrictions, for example, at Amazon and the logistics issues? What sort of measures did you take to address these issues? So, yeah, so um, like I had mentioned a little bit, uh, uh, I think that inventory planning is very important. And especially when you have the Chinese New Year, like now, now would be a good time to prepare and maybe have two shipments, one the beginning of January and one the end of January, if Amazon removes its restrictions. And then one right after um, you know, the uh, New Year holiday ends. So that way you, you have your monthly inventory and always plan for that monthly inventory. I think that, that helped us. And so even now that there is restrictions on Amazon, we had already had enough inventory. So we've been um, okay for now, at least. I mean, we're hoping that the restrictions will be removed in January and then we'll be able to ship, ship products immediately. So, um, and in terms of the logistics, I think what we did was, uh, even though the cost was high, we just, um, we just air shipped as much as we could during that time. Um, you know, in March and April and May, um, as much as we could, and that helped us uh, keep a certain level of inventory. Um, in fact, one of another challenge that we actually had was that uh, because our product was um, selling very well, we we actually a lot of competitors entered the market at that time because it was kind of like the gold rush. So, uh, so and they're still there and they're selling at a much cheaper price. But um, um, so we, we learned to navigate. I think that the competition also makes you stronger. So you start thinking of strategies that, you know, so you can survive uh, within the competition. So I think it helped us get stronger and prepare um, for 2021, where we would like to do some more marketing. And, um, you know, I think like uh, use influencers and, um, you know, um, 
more build relationships with our customers, not just sell on Amazon. Um, right. So how did you deal with the competition? You know, when you when you suddenly had all of these other sellers selling your product, like, did you try to maybe differentiate your product in some way? Or what did you do to to overcome that? Yeah, so uh, we had a competitive advantage compared to the newcomers because we, we've been looking at customer feedback. So we've been improving our product, um, you know, based on customer feedback. So that was one thing. And of course, we increased our, our uh, advertising budget. And I think uh, one of the advantages of that uh, was for our product in terms of COVID was that the demand increased because shoppers overall e-commerce has increased. So that helped us. Uh, so we were we, we don't have a product like you know the ones that are related to travel or anything like that. So um, overall, the demand increased, and um, so that was good for us. So we we did increase our advertising um, a lot. Okay, great. So I guess uh, you know we're already talking about the opportunities that uh, you sort of had. So uh, you know your your sales um, tripled. <laughs> you said so that was fantastic. Um, what sort of other opportunities did you see? Um, so, you know, as a result of sales um, increasing, I think, so we saw it as an opportunity. If sales are increasing, so we, we've increased our staff. And so we're getting, we're preparing for growing even further, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we just use it as an opportunity to um, start bringing in new products that our customers uh, purchase together, you know, so we can kind of get the customer uh build that relationship with the customer you know whatever kind of products the customer likes we are starting to bring them so um that uh, it, overall it's helped us because um uh, what i feel is that if you focus on uh, basically whenever you have a challenge i think you need to focus on what you can control and if you focus on what you can control, then you will see a lot of opportunities. Uh, so things like Amazon, you know, uh, restricting the inventory in Q2 and Q4, um, those are things beyond our control. Or the competitors getting into the market and selling at a much cheaper price, you know, those are beyond control. Uh, another thing we did um, is obviously uh, optimize our listing. So in terms of keywords and you know, pictures, uh, uh, the listing itself, you know, um, we, we've also worked on improving, improving that so that that everything will help everything counts. So your advertising, your listing, your pictures, you know, building a great relation, having a great customer service. Um, and of course, having inventory in the physical products business, if you don't have inventory, you don't have any business. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So did you think that 2020 was a good year to launch new products? Um, yeah, I, uh, I, definitely. Like Ivan mentioned, I mean, there were, um, there are some products that are have tripled and, you know, 10x or something like that. So um, definitely, I mean, there, uh, uh, and I see the same coming in 2021. I mean, definitely, for sure, because e commerce has increased. So, um, you know, Right. I guess you just need to be very careful about what product you launch because, you know, you don't want to be launching like a, at least in 2020, you know, maybe 2021 travel will, will open up again. But in 2020, you didn't want to be launching like suitcases or, or luggage or things like that. But <laughs> I think that's that was the biggest challenge that, uh, you know, I, I heard brands had in 2020 was they didn't know. Uh, what products to launch, what what should their new product strategy be? I mean, especially retailers, um, you know, they were really struggling with uh, new product launches, I feel. Um, okay, so Ivan, let's come to you and let's talk about the opportunities. So you did mention a bit of the challenges that you had faced, but what sort of opportunities did you see in those challenges? So it's interesting you say that because uh, about 40 days ago, we just launched uh, a new UVC air purifier. Um, and we, I think we have close to $325,000 in 40 days of, wow. for a brand new product. Yeah. So talk about finding a product that's relevant. And yeah. literally everybody, so we've been working on this for probably uh, eight, eight to nine months now. 
and our mm -hmm. manufacturing partner is Foxconn. So it's very, very hard to break into this market because it's so flooded, especially air purification. So we've, we actually created one that has a UVC bulb inside it, you know, today, 2020, that's probably the most, most relevant thing that you can create besides a hand sanitizer or a face mask. So, <laughs> you know, it is a massive opportunity for companies to grow in 2020 because now people are hyper-focused at solving their problems. Like before a lot of these luxury items like air purifier just never had the focus. PPE just never had the focus. Um, and now that everyone's just looking that direction, it's a great opportunity to come in and grab it and just, you know, become that market leader because these industries never were looked at for a very, very long time. So it created a huge opportunity and it's still not done yet. Uh, like I said, I just launched that 40 days ago. Um, and we're looking at second and third product lines for it. The other opportunity that we're finding is that kind of like what Mbubo was saying is that going deeper into your customer. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're just selling a product, this is a good opportunity to even tap into them and have them create the next product line. So we have a supplement company um, and we have a sleep aid product. And we literally uh, sent out a survey to a few thousand of them and they asked to change it a certain way. Uh, and then we, we did that, the reviews are coming in like exponentially faster, saying that the product is better. Like you literally use your customers to create your next product, which is a very mm -hmm. interesting thing. Uh, the third opportunity I found in 2020 for, for our brands and the brands that we help is to create a story digitally. So everybody is on YouTube, everybody is consuming content people are discovering products through this channel more than ever. So, you know, having a YouTuber talk about a brand. So for example, Anchor or, uh, you know, Yufi, Xiaomi, they are all notoriously good at this. If you search your product on YouTube, they will have thousands of people reviewing the product and everything is SEO titled. All the content is curated, Amazon affiliate links all set up. It's just, this is how people are discovering products and there's an opportunity to go beyond just retail store and to just completely blanket the internet at a very low cost. Yeah, that's uh, really exciting, Ivan. And uh, you know, that actually brings us to influencer marketing. So let's talk about influencer marketing specifically. And uh, you know, your company of course has helped Anchor and, and many you know, very established brands to um, to do influencer marketing. So can you tell us, first of all, what exactly is influencer marketing? How do you define it? And then how do you think it's evolving uh, in the current situation? Okay, so that's a really good topic. I had to take a quick drink there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so influencer marketing in the traditional sense, people used to think this was the beautiful, you know, fashion, you know, fashion novas of the world and they would wear fancy, you know, fancy clothes and talk about their brands. It's shifting. So the concept of who is an influencer is not these, you know, celebrities. It's actually thought leaders is what we call them. Um, so for example, I'm looking for, I'm just gonna use an arbitrary example. Let's say I'm looking for solar panels. And if I'm, uh, if I'm a customer, let's say in the United States, I'm gonna be using YouTube. So if you search solar panel on YouTube, uh, actually, uh, Megla, I'd love to share my screen and kind of just walk you through it. So yes, let's go for it. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah. Okay. Application window. Okay. Yeah, we and practiced every... this yesterday. Let's hope it works. Yeah. <laughs> can everyone see okay. my screen? Yes, okay. we can see it too. I'd love to show you this. So let's say if I'm searching for a solar panel, uh, what am I going to search for? Best solar panel. Okay. So this is just using just, you know, conversational words is what people are searching on YouTube for. So they're not searching for, you know, 500 watt solar panel. They're searching for best solar panel. So this is kind of the, the keywords that you want to dial into. So these guys, some of them are, you know, professional reviewers. But many of them are people that just, you know, they have a camper van, they live their life on the road, and they're just talking about solar panels. And they get thousands and thousands of views. And people are going to them because they say, hey, 
uh, Raya Solar, you talked about 10 generations of solar panel. You know what you're talking about, right? So there's this trust factor that's transferred over when you're looking at an influencer. So kind of turning the existing model of an influencer upside down. It's not these popular celebrities. It's actually people that are thought leaders or, or know the space really well. Uh, so that's that's one thing that we're seeing is, is absolutely growing up in the influencer world. A trick that I like to share, especially for Amazon sellers. So there's a big differentiator here is that there are thought leaders that talk about products and there's thought leaders that sell products. Now, if you're an Amazon seller, uh, Mabuba, I, I assume you are. Mm -hmm. A trick that you know, Amazon has an Amazon affiliate program. So you know there are short links on AMZN. Right. Uh, I put AMZN Solar on YouTube. All oh. of these people are sharing their Amazon link. So you know that A, they're thought leaders, and B, they're already familiar with the Amazon affiliate program, meaning you don't have to sell them anything. <laughs> right. They have a motivation. They have the motivation. You don't have to explain anything. You just, hey, here's my product. Let's do it. Let's let's engage. So that's one of the hacks that we've learned. And I'm just sharing it because, hey, this, you know, knowledge is power. The more that I can share, the better. So rather than just. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah I you. hadn't thought about that. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm going to try it for my brand. <laughs> so AMZN is the Amazon affiliate link. So if they're using yeah. AMZN in their link, you already know they're already registered as an Amazon affiliate. So, you know, there's a lot of tricks like this, but if you're not just an Amazon seller, let's say you're using ShareSale or Refersion, they all have their own shortener links. So again, like there's a shortcut way to the internet, that's one. <laughs> so that'll get you, let's say, probably 40, 50% of the way in. If you wanna go a little deeper, um, you know, there's a lot of tools that we recommend. I could go into that later. Or do you want me to go into that now? Yeah, sure. Why don't you go into it now? I mean, do you have the tab open? I do. I've so, got it all. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So there's, and I, I, like I said, knowledge is power. The more that I can share with you, you know, the better the industry is going to get. So um, there are a lot of platforms out there. So you're saying, how can I find these influencers? There's a lot of platforms out there that make it easier. And I'm not affiliated with them. I just use them. Um, they're very useful. So it's called Group High. So it's, it's a really, it basically aggregates all the social media platforms. I'm logged in here and I'll show you how it works. Again, I'm not affiliated with them. I just, this is probably one of the best ones I'd recommend. Uh, so let's say I'm looking for mommy bloggers. So I'm gonna search mom. So what group I, there's, there's a ton of these platforms out there. It's, it's, it's pretty commonplace. So instead of going to Instagram yourself or YouTube, you can actually use a platform and they'll aggregate it all for you and they'll pull in the data that you need. So I know all of these people are bombing, you know, they use certain hashtags, whatever it may be, but this shortcuts, this makes it easier. Uh, and in the last tip, I would say to look for influencers is look at your competitors. So mm -hmm. for example, I, I have, I have a solar panel in my car. So I really look at solar panels. So the brand that I love is, let's say, Renogy. So let's say if I'm a competitor in the solar panel space, I know that Renogy is another one. So all of these people, of course, not, not the company themselves. Look at who is talking about them. Chances are they're looking for other products because you know they're just Amazon affiliates. So the more products they can review. Again, I just want to make the differentiation. Influencer in this sense of the word is not you know the fashion celebrities that a lot of uh, people misconstrue as an influencer of today. Today, they are thought leaders. So uh, we have a supplement company um, and the influencers for them are professors that have a PhD in, immu in like immunology or they're biologists or they're chemists. So, you know, that's, it's basically the transfer of trust is what you're looking for. When people watch this person, they trust their opinion and when they recommend your product and you know it goes a lot further than just you know add on facebook right yeah, and absolutely. the final thing is it's evergreen content so it's going to live on youtube forever right so but how do you ensure that when they do promote your product it doesn't sound too you know salesy and it's sort of um 
relevant to the audience and it doesn't sound fake. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is why it's so important and kind of using what I'm sharing on my screen right now. If you watch these people, they're not just selling a product. Their lifestyle rotates around, you know, going outside with solar panels. So let's, let's use another industry because we've already talked about solar. So let's talk about uh, carry. I think it's called carry way. Uh, pan, caraway, caraway, cara. So this is another brand that's blowing up like crazy. Home and houseware. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> doing well. Okay, so I, I have a client and they literally are saying, I'm hitting Black Friday numbers every single day. Wow. <laughs> Just nonstop. Because everyone's at home and they want to. <laughs> They want to cook and they want to take pictures of what they cook with. So of course, brands like these are absolutely going crazy. So if you look at these people, a lot of them, they're not necessarily saying buy it, but they're saying, Hey, I, I look at cookware my entire life. I'm a professional chef. Here's my opinion. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting when you think about it, it's, it's rather than, you know, these people are not just selling and that's why you have to do your homework. You have to understand who is the person that's talking about your product uh, and make sure it's relevant because if it's not relevant, they're going to lose their customer. They're going to lose their audience and you're not going to get customers. So these platforms only take you, you know, so far, but it is up to, you know, if you're working with, you know, someone like CrowdCreate or a brand like CrowdCreate or you're working with somebody else, it's important that you just, it's almost like dating. You have to find that right match, right? You can't. I use that analogy because it's very relevant. <laughs> yeah, it totally makes sense. So you want to find an influencer who's relevant and, and right for your brand. Mehbuba, what do you think about influencer marketing and, you know, what Ivan was just sharing? Would you be excited about it, you know, as, as a brand owner? Uh, yeah, actually, I uh, I didn't know that the the tips that uh, Ivan just shared. So thank you, <laughs> Ivan. But but I have um, just searched online and I have reached out to these kind of influencers, and um, some of them have been very helpful. Uh, and I think they're very honest. Usually, they would uh, only be interested in the product if it's um, along the lines of what they normally talk about. It's not just about getting a free product, and they would try to talk honestly about the product, and they wouldn't they wouldn't normally work with you if um, if if it's not if they don't like the product or something like that. So I do have a little bit of experience doing that, but um, I think that we need to do more of more of it. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that another thing that I could say regarding the influencers is that. Um, you know, you kind of outsmart your competition because if if somebody is sold by watching that YouTube video, they're not going to look at they're not going to look for a cheaper product. They're not going to look through multiple products and find the best one. They will just buy it because they are trusting. They've already invested their time watching that video and they're already sold before they you know click on that link to come and purchase it. So yeah, that's uh, actually. That's actually a big, a big difference because let's say in the traditional way you advertise, you know, you have to show them at least seven different places, right? Instagram, Facebook, you know, on Amazon, and that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money. But if you get, you know, one influencer to vouch for you, they transfer that trust. Not only that, but your link, your Amazon link is now going to keep, it's going to stay with this video as this video grows organically. So it's also SEO play too, because YouTube videos are also indexed on Google. Right. So it's kind of evergreen and you can get consistent sales over time. That's fantastic. Um, Alan has joined us. Hi, Alan. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> okay. So um, Ivan, do you also want to share about, um, you know, you did this influencer marketing campaign for Anchor. Do you want to talk about that and... Uh, you know, how, how did that go? That was one of the products that you did was um, a vacuum cleaner, right? A robotic vacuum cleaner. Tell us yeah. more about that. I'd love to share. And also on a side note mm -hmm. is that robotic vacuums are also another uh, industry that's booming because everyone's mm -hmm. at home and their houses are getting messier and they don't <laughs> want to clean up. So they're going to look for robotic <laughs> vacuum. Actually, it's interesting because one of my friends, he, he runs uh, a robotic vacuum uh, in China, domestic market, 
And for singles day, he broke all the numbers. I think he sold 65,000 units in a single day. Wow. So, <laughs> in a single day. <laughs> in a single day. But it's, it's, it's amazing. But let me go ahead and share my screen one more time. Yeah. I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> all right. So you guys can see my screen. So yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the clients that we work with, uh, Ufi. So Ufi is a sub brand under Anchor. And I just wanted to show that, you know, Ufi Anchor is no, you know, they, they've been around the block. They're actually a very amazing company. Uh, I spent time in their Guangzhou office when I used to be at a travel. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you look at their YouTube, uh, if you search Ufi RoboVac, it's amazing to see the amount of SEO optimized content that they've created. I can scroll for probably the next 20 minutes. I'm going to find videos that still say it's optimized to say the brand and the product name. It just goes on and on. And that just goes to say, like, you know, if you, if you put in a consistent effort to doing this, evergreen content will just overpower your competitors. Uh, but on to the case study. So actually, Ufi is, uh, so it's a robotic vacuum. They have many lines. So connecting them with the right influencer is key. You know, it is it is a $300 robot. It's not, it th doesn't fall under the impulse buy. You know, it's a little bit more expensive. So you're, you're targeting a specific niche audience. So uh, one of the influencers that we connected them with is Katie Hearn Fit. So Katie Hearn, she's a wonderful person. She has an amazing story. If you ever want to read into her, she has an amazing story. Uh, she's in Louisville, Kentucky. And, you know, we worked with her. She created a post. And here it is. I'm going to find it on her feed. But it made a lot of sense because she just moved into her house. You know, you can see it's a new house, wood floors. She has pets. She has a new baby. She does not want to clean up. In fact, if I was her, I, I wouldn't want to clean up either. It's, it's not fun. <laughs> but you can see that it kind of makes sense in her story that a robotic vacuum would show up, right? It's not like, oh, you know, I'm just at the park and here's a robotic vacuum. It's, hey, I moved <laughs> the house. I've been talking about this house for months, right? I've been sharing it. You see my house, you see I, my newborn baby. You know, I didn't just adopt the baby and put it here. This baby's journey has been all along the way. So, you know, a robotic vacuum showing up you can see it here. So this is the robotic vacuum, but it came from a very organic place. And in, in her credit, you know, she actually said, I want to test this out for a few months. I don't want to talk about a product that I don't absolutely believe in. So, you know, we worked with her um, and this posted phenomenally well. Um, the numbers, not to disclose the exact numbers, but it was over 80 thousand in sales in between two to three days but that's just a conservative estimate wow. you know the numbers show and it's important to know that you know these these influencers they care about their brand as much as you do mm -hmm. and you know they don't want to come from a place where it was like from left field it, it makes sense and then at the end of the day kind of like what Mububo was saying they actually will say no if it doesn't make sense to them, you know, they're, they're not in the business of necessarily making money anymore. They're making enough money <laughs> from their you know, social media alone. So they're, they're actually looking for things that would add value to their audience. Right. So Margaret Jolly's here. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Nika. Hi, Margaret. How are you? So Margaret and Alan are having a conversation here. <laughs> so Alan, Margaret, are you, have you guys tried or thought about influencer marketing at all? I know you guys are Amazon sellers. So Alan, what about you? Have you thought about influencer marketing? Tell us in the comments. So Ivan, do these influencers really care about the brand? I mean, do they mostly prefer to work with the bigger brands? You know, like Anchor is a very big established brand, of course, and uh but what about the small players? You know, what about somebody like uh, an Amazon seller, like Mahbuba? Would would they be interested in working with a smaller player as well? Absolutely. You have to understand their, their story arc. So let's say if you're, you know, I don't know exactly what Mahbuba is selling, but let's say you sell, uh, I don't know, let's say like a candle. And it kind of, mm -hmm. and it, this person's entire journey has been finding the most organic candle in the world. 
and you you have it and you give it to them and then you basically answered your question and they've been talking about it for months and months on end so as long as there's a match uh and also that product that i was talking about um the uvc air purifier so we actually sent it to a lot of reviewers that said the traditional hepa air filter does not does not kill viruses that bacteria it just it just collects it inside those paper filters, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it just holds it. It's not killing anything. And he was complaining about this for a very long time. So when we, when we sent it to him, you know, we would actually do a personal phone call and explain, hey, this is the UVC bulb that the hospitals use. It's now in an air filter. And he's like, I want one to put him onto my parents' house because my parents need one, right? So do you see what I'm saying? It's like, if you understand them and then they like a product, even if it's not a big brand, you know, if it makes sense and they see the value and they know that you're not just there to, you know, just to make a quick buck as you're trying to invest in a company, those are things that uh, influencers are looking for. Um, what I would say is based on my experience, what I noticed is um, there are some influencers who uh, would do it for money uh, for a certain amount of payments, um, they already have like a you know a set amount, uh, and they have different services. Uh, but then there, um, the influencers that have millions of um, you know followers, like what Ivan just shared, I think um, they prefer to work with the bigger brands. Am I incorrect, Ivan? Not necessarily as bigger brands, but they're looking for a match. Uh, especially these bigger influencers. You are right. There's a there's a subset of influencers that are, you know, it's it's a business for them. And in a lot of cases, if you search with the AMZN, you're going to find a lot of those because that's what they do for a living. You know, they make money off affiliates. So for those, it's it's a pretty straightforward transaction. But you're not going to get the organic push um, that you would want. Again, you know, sometimes they have big budgets. Sometimes they just will do it for free because they've been looking for, they've been looking for a solution like this. So it's a it's a give and grab, and that's actually the the relationship part of uh, influencer outreach. Is if you can create a relationship, they will you know shortcut your product, do it earlier, or sometimes they won't even charge a fee. They just want to work with you. Oh, interesting. So Alan is saying, I've thought about it, but sadly not followed through with it. Maybe I could connect with Ivan for a chat on my new brand. Yes, absolutely. And we're going to share Ivan's email address in a bit over here, but you can also look him up on LinkedIn and get connected. So Margaret is saying, I thought about it a lot, need to find the right influencer to work with. Yeah, I think that's what Ivan was saying. It has to be relevant to what they do. And I think your types of products, Margaret, might be really good for influencer marketing. I'm not going to share what it is, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, awesome. So um, Ivan, maybe, well, let's also talk about 2021 and, you know, what are the things that you guys are excited about for 2021? So maybe, well, let me ask you first, what sort of plans do you have for 2021 and what are you excited about? So, um, you know, definitely... Uh like look more into the influencer marketing now with the tips that Ivan shared definitely have to check those out <laughs> and um and uh we do have uh our goals to uh, continue growing and uh definitely uh you know uh, build that relationship with customers and market directly to them which we have not done as much uh being on the Amazon platform so um that's something that uh, we definitely want to do uh, excessively. And we're, we're uh, hiring staff to get ready for that kind of, um, you know, uh, work. And also we are um, uh, definitely, you know, like e-commerce is growing. So Amazon is growing, e-commerce is growing, and we uh, predict that it's going to continue to grow in 2021. And, you know, habits have al already been formed uh, if even though COVID is not as, may not be as severe next year, but habits have already been formed among the consumers. So we expect that e-commerce, they will continue shopping the way they are and shopping less physic at the physical stores. So um, we, want, we want to take advantage of that and uh, launch a few more products in our product line. 
um, so. Right. And are you also thinking of diversifying your selling platform? So currently you're focused on Amazon quite a bit, but do you want to try other platforms like, you know, Walmart or um, Wayfair or, you know, some of the other platforms Shopify. that are gaining traction? Shopify, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's another um, thing we've looked at. And um, actually, in terms of the opportunities, Amazon Cree, uh, offered us this opportunity to, to start selling in Mexico and Canada without actually keeping the inventory there. So um, that was actually something we took advantage of this year. Um, so we're able to sell in those two countries without physically shipping the inventory there. Um, right. So we expect, you know, maybe similar opportunities from Amazon as well. Yeah. And uh, of course, Amazon has been growing so fast this year, but there are also, you know, so many difficulties. But despite all of that, it's it's a great business model. But do you think, I mean, what sort of advice do you have for, uh, you know, new sellers or people who are thinking about getting into e-commerce? What advice would you have for them uh, for 2021? I think that there is still a lot of opportunities for new sellers um, coming from a job like uh, having, I think that one of the biggest uh, growths that I, I um, had to develop as an entrepreneur was the mindset part, which uh, necessarily when you're doing a job, you don't re really work on. So I think that um, if anybody is uh, considering joining um, you know, an Amazon business or any an other kind of business. I think this, there's a lot of uh, opportunity online and um, it's just about mindset, you know, um, just uh, believing in yourself, you know, focusing on what you can control and, um, you know, there will be problems, <laughs> but then, you know, if you look through, you know, the, the, you find the silver lining, there are always opportunities among the problems. And I think Ivan shared some of those opportunities as well today. So um, I would encourage um, young people, uh, you know, who are interested to join, I mean, uh, or young or any age as <laughs> well, to, um, I, think, I think it's a great thing um, to, uh, to, to be an entrepreneur and to create jobs for other people. And um, you, you can, it's, it's initially hard, but if you can uh, pass through, you actually uh, do much better than probably, well, it depends on your personality. I mean, some people might like to do, you know, a job, which is fine. Um, and and uh, I think the difficult part is like taking risks. So that's why the mindset is so important because you have to be able to take risks and still stay calm and make calm decisions that, um, and you will make mistakes and still, you know, you have to find ways out of, um, you know, whatever mistakes and learn from those mistakes. So, um, yeah, I would definitely encourage anybody who's interested to, who is interested, you have to be interested. So yeah, <laughs> it's not just about the money or anything like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's so right. I mean, Amazon FBA, like any other business is a business and it's not something that you just get into, um, you know, to make a, like a quick buck. I think a lot of people out there, some of the course sellers have kind of positioned it as a get rich quick scheme, but that's not what it is. <laughs> so, okay, great advice, Mehbuba. Thank you. Okay, Ivan, what about you? What are some of the trends that you are looking forward to in 2021? Yeah, so 20, 2021 is, um, I think the consumer buying uh, habits and thinking has changed. So, you know, a lot of people, and I'll just give anecdotally a story from my parents. So my parents used to buy in stores, like the things that they need, like, you know, toilet paper, towels, they used to buy those in a store and they would buy the special things online, mm -hmm. right? So they would shop at Costco and if they found something that's really interesting, they'll buy online. But now, that buying of your daily necessities has transitioned mm. online. So now there's this massive shift in buying power and we're seeing a lot of growth in everyday things, right? So uh, necessities, uh, you know, cookware, things that you normally would go to a store to buy are now done, done online. So I think there's a massive opportunity for people to jump in 
when there's not a lot of brand dominance in these like everyday things, right? People are just, I, you know, I, my parents are buying juice on Amazon <laughs> now when they used to go to the grocery store. <laughs> and the, shift, the, the buying power is changing. And I would actually urge a lot of uh, people who are thinking about starting a brand or, you know, buying or looking, looking to source products is look at the everyday things. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is don't try to build, I guess, the example I use is honest company. Don't try to be the honest company in one day. Just, you know, jump, jump, jump in right away, put up those products, test it. Like what Mabuba was saying, you know, there's a lot of things that can be done on the optimization side, you know, optimizing your image, your thumbnails, but get it out there. Just get it out there as quickly as you can because there's there's a huge opportunity right now. Uh, the second thing is I'm personally excited about is because now that everyone's at home, people are making more content than ever before. So if I ever have a question, the answer is there on YouTube. Like if like I mean this is funny, but if you want to find influencers. If you YouTube how to find influencers, I'm, I promise you there's going to be at least 50 videos telling you all of these things. In fact, this video is going to be up on the internet too. It's like <laughs> so much wealth of knowledge out there that, you know, people are telling me, hey, I, I don't know where to get started. And I say, hey, just, you know, look it up. There's no, there's no reason that's preventing you from getting started, especially 2020. Fantastic. That is absolutely great advice. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to 2021. And um, before we came on live, I was saying that I think I'm more excited about, you know, letting, uh, I mean, the passing <laughs> of 2020 <laughs> or <laughs> uh, bidding farewell to 2020 than welcoming 2021. So, yeah, everybody, I think, is very, uh, you know, optimistic about 2021, and especially in the e-commerce industry, of course. And we are also looking forward to traveling again, you know, hopefully with the vaccines um, being rolled out throughout the year, maybe who knows when, but hopefully soon we'll all be able to travel and we'll all be able to go to the Global Sources trade shows in Hong Kong <laughs> later in the year. Um, so, yeah, I'm personally looking forward to traveling again. <laughs> Um, okay, awesome. So Elton is saying useful info, though. Uh, thanks for joining us, Elton. Okay, I'm also going to share Ivan's email address in case anyone's interested in reaching out to Ivan. Uh, you can reach him at Ivan at crowdcreates.us. And you can also look him up on LinkedIn. Um, you can also look up Mehbuba on LinkedIn in case you want to get connected with her and um, reach out to her as well. So Ivan Mabuba, thank you so much for your time today and sharing all of this um, awesome information. Um, and we look forward to hopefully welcoming you, welcoming you in Hong Kong at the Global Sources shows next year. Thank you, Megla. Thank you, Megla. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll be back with another episode of um, a Buyer's Fireside Chat next month. Have a great holiday, everyone. Take care.